right, welcome back guys. All right, this time we want to get into how to reboot the computer or even shut it down. Um, and there's one caveat about that, but this is what we added to the EFI main. Practically, that's all we added. Um, and so now that means we should not make it to this point. We should not be uh, returning anything. Once we get to this, it should just automatically reboot, okay? Now, what are the differences? Well, scroll all the, all the way down, and this is what we added right underneath the delay. Now, we have the cold reboot, and what that does is basically it restarts the computer from, like it resets all the hardware and everything. A warm reboot resets basically only the software end of it. It just reboots the computer, but in a way it does it software-wise. So there's a lot of hardware back end that does not get reset. These two, both of these, should work in VirtualBox. Now, shutdown does not work in VirtualBox, but it does work on real hardware. So this basically just shuts off the computer. So anyways, I wanted to at least share that with you so that you could see uh, what's all here. And we're going to utilize this, um, but when you want to experiment, uh, let's go back here. When you want to experiment, you can actually replace this with shutdown and put it on a thumbstick and uh, you know, a USB stick and boot up this, this. All of this, by the way, my whole tutorial series will work on real hardware. I've already tested all this. So... You should be able to, if you get this to compile right and it works in VirtualBox, it should also work in real hardware. Anyways, with that said, um, so yeah, there's your options. Now, what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with runtime services now. Last video was about the boot services, but this time runtime services. We didn't have runtime services. It was just a placeholder, but now we actually have to have that. Now, before we get to that, we had to add again a couple of things. Um, we had to add in stuff like this. Uh, see, uh, reset cold warm. We had to add in this. Um, and I think, I think, I don't think we had to, add, I think that was already in from last time. So, uh, and then there was EFI capsular. I think I had to actually add that as well. But it may have already been there from the last video. I just don't remember now. Um, anyhow. With that, so I had to add that above, and scrolling down, we had the, the EFI boot services. This is where we ended up with the stall and the locate protocol. But here, I had to add in all of this right here for the runtime services, and that is this section right here. So it calls all this, and what we're doing is we can call reset system. There it is, right there. Which takes in the reset status. All right, actually we can get a, get a return status, a reset status, that's actually handy. Um, and of course the reset data that we wanna use and the reset type. Now, the reset data and the data size, I usually keep those at zeros. In fact, if you take a look, they're set to zeros. But we're returning a success right here. And basically, what this means is over here, uh, oops, wrong one, sorry, over here. Normally, when you return, you're returning a success here, okay? So with this, we can actually tell the computer, hey, we're going to return an error. And you can actually replace this with that. And in fact, error codes, bring that out. So you can actually say um, device not ready. We can actually return that as an actual return. I would not recommend it. There's no reason to. But I'm saying you can do that. Um, success is what you want, though. So when you return a success, it should reboot the computer. And this is where the EFI reset cold, uh, the reset warm, and the reset that, uh, the shutdown. And then, of course, that's over here. Uh, we were looking at it earlier. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where are you? I know you're here. 
And there you are. Anyhow, so let's test it out and um, see it working in action. So we're going to compile that. Take this. Cut. And again, if you want to um, do the shutdown, you cannot use it in VirtualBox. Now, as far as QEMU, I don't think you could use it there either. But don't quote me on that because I actually really don't know. I don't think you can, though. Uh, real hardware, though, it works just fine. Or at least on all the computers that I've tested on, it does. So if you come across one that it doesn't work on, uh, the shutdown uh, does not work on, uh, let me know. I'm actually curious. All right, so we'll open this up and see see how this actually looks. Now, remember, when we've exited our operating or our interface, we've always gone to the virtual box white screen where we had to choose the reset. But this time, we're not going to do that. Watch this. We don't go back there, it just automatically reboots. And we're called rebooting. So it's actually resetting the configuration from VirtualBox. And in software-wise, it does not reset the configuration. It only resets the software end of it. So yeah. Anyhow, yeah, this makes it for much easier and nicer. And it's right at this video series, um, Tutorial 9, by the way, is also working with me this this is where we're at right now well it's also here is where that on my github the uh, space invaders game is at because if you recall in the libs file i had these in there so this is basically what i'm using over there at this time Future tutorials. Now these. Uh, now I'm working on number 13. You you don't have access to the 13 yet. But these next three are about files and such, and it's uh, going to be a little tricky to to teach. But uh, I'm going to do my best. So, uh, and number 13. Well, that's a surprise. So, anyhow, guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.